morning everyone and welcome back it's Terry welcome back to my channel and as I'm sitting here pulling off some dead leaves off of my which I thought was doing so good this Maxillaria sanguinea did good all summer but I guess there's new growths coming up down there but there is certainly a lot of browning that I don't care while I'm doing this please uh, like the video if you care and subscribe to my channel please today I wanted to briefly talk about a genus that I really love a lot it's really up in my top probably five genuses and that would be Gongora Gongora is uh, it's about 65 species from South Central America Trinidad and tropical South America most of the species are though from Colombia they grow in a wide uh, range from wet, wet forests at sea level, even into the mountainous regions in the Andes as high as 1,800 meters. Uh, this is the only gongora that I have at this time. This is my grossa, which flowered for me. Uh, it wasn't this year, it was last year. This year, as I said, uh, <clears throat> this summer, I should say, as I said, earlier in some of the videos that I made this summer, I did not have a good year for Stanhopia types. Gongora is in the Stanhopia Alliance. Uh, the name comes from, uh, well, it was in, named in honor of Antonio Caballero and Gongora, who at the time was a former viceroy of New, New Granada in Spain and also, well, Colombia and Ecuador, which is where the vice, viceroy was. And also he was the governor of Peru during the uh, Spanish... Uh, expedition that uh, was uh, known to bring back uh, some of the first orchids into uh, the Western uh, civilization. Um, all of these, all of the species in Gongora are epiphytic with semi-sympodial growth. This did bloom for me uh, as I was beginning to say uh, two years two summers ago I got it from Equigenera it was as more or less a bag baby baby was bare root and I potted it into a mount and then later on that summer it did bloom for me beautifully I'll post pictures um, the aerial roots on Gongoras are very thin and fine and the way that they tend to grow it they grow upright instead of hanging down and this specialization in the way that they grow helps to form a ball of roots and a lot of times these roots are associated with uh, the presence of ants, ant nests, and also the roots being turned up, turned up or growing up allows them to catch debris, which in turn uh, is broken down into uh, food for the plant. Um, the, the pseudobulbs on all gongoras are conical and ridged and one of the reasons, one of the problems that I've had with gongoras is making sure that these areas do not get scale. Once they get scale in some of these areas, it's very difficult to get the scale out of them. And the inflorescence, much like, uh, well, stanhopias tend to go grow straight down. Gongoras tend to start out erect, and then they tend to uh, bend early in the development and become pendulous and the numerous flowers that the inflorescence produce generally hang upside down with the lip upwards. Um, they are generally very fragrant, very waxy. Uh, some of the fragrances are nutmeg, cinnamon. Uh, so it's a very fragrant, uh, unique uh, epiphytic orchid that I love. As I said, it's, uh, it's um, in the Stanhopia section. They do like bright indirect light, and they, water is probably the most important thing, and humidity. They never like to be dried out, and if they do get dry, they will die. So they do like to be moist year-round, and they do like drainage. So unless you are really good with your watering, perhaps uh, baskets are better to allow the water to co to exit, but they do like uh, some moisture retentive material in there as well. As I said, they do like uh, brighter sunlight, but 
on the level of, of, of Phalaenopsis, they will tolerate less light, but they prefer a higher light. And in the summer, definitely, they prefer it to be on the shady side, whereas in the winter, they can take a little bit more of the rays of the sun. Um, Gongoras also prefer it to be warm if the temperature gets below 50 or in the 50s they will die that's been my detriment to my gongoras but this one was was placed near one of my floor heaters so it was allowed to maintain a more ambient temperature that they prefer rather than some of my other ones that i had hanging high up with some of my uh, sanhopias uh, they were they died over the winter because of the temperature um, what else can I say? I did tr attempt to mount this Gongora, which, as you can see, it's long gone dead. This was a, a Gongora that I got this year from Equigenera, but it did not get enough moisture. It was fine until I bought it in here, and then in here I just did not water it quite as good. So that is definitely the detriment to the plant. But everyone, if you've enjoyed my video, Make sure to tune in again soon, and I appreciate you so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.